a beautiful song. That's the ballad singer-songwriter Curtis Mayfield wrote for his love, Diane. It was about her, she believes. It was just a gentle reminder to a, a woman. Add a little sugar. How wonderful and beautiful she is and, and how she's uh, appreciated. A great big expression of happiness. Can't get any better than that. <laughs> Todd Mayfield is Curtis Mayfield's second eldest son. The famous musician had nine children. We met up with Todd at his condo in Chicago to talk about his book and the recent film option for his famous father's story. It was very personal. When I told family members that I wanted to write a book, there was a lot of like apprehension, like, what are you going to say? You know, that kind of thing. And, uh, but I, I tried to um, do no harm. But at the same time, I had to be real. A few would-be biographers have tried to tell my father's story. None have done it well. They failed because they had no access to his inner life, to what drove him. He was pretty much an introvert, and uh, he was a homebody. I was probably the best person to do it because no one else would know him that way. Man, oh man, have you been to Spain? The Traveling Soul chronicles the prolific songwriter's career from cradle to grave. It explains how he taught himself to play his beloved guitar at just seven years old, never learning to read or write music, and he tuned that instrument to all the black keys on the piano. He wrote his first song at the age of 15. It also details how he loved the ladies and wanted total control and all rights to his music. They had no knowledge of his deep insecurities over his dark skin, big teeth, and small stature, of the humiliation he suffered at the hands of schoolmates because of his family's desperate poverty. We people who are darker than blue. Most remember Mayfield for his trademark falsetto voice, something that always set him apart from the rest. It's a tenor and with falsetto uh, elements. <laughs> because his speaking voice wasn't high, and that was the way he felt he could distinguish himself. Flames ate away at the crumbling foundations of the West Side Ghetto, an area where peace always is a precious commodity. Mayfield's lyrics were unique, resonating with the tumultuous times of the 60s. As war was raging in Vietnam and a civil rights movement brewing in the U.S., this music became the anthem for the movement. And oftentimes, it was so controversial that many radio stations were refusing to play his records. W.S. wouldn't play it, but he just would still do it. And he didn't seem to, to write music necessarily to become a hit. He just did what he wanted to do. I think he would probably say the more things change, the more they say the same. Mayfield's life is reflected in the more than 800 songs he wrote throughout his career. And he wrote music for many movies. Among them, the 1970 multi-million dollar selling soundtrack for the black exploitation film Superfly. The amount of gratuitous uh, drug use in the movie and so a lot of people, uh, especially in the black establishment, came out against the film. If you listen to the soundtrack, it was kind of a counterbalance to the film. And the soundtrack um, was the thing that propelled the film to success. And this is the certified gold record for the single Freddy's Dead. From the Superfly soundtrack. Say it's all right. it's all right. Mayfield grew up in Chicago where he started singing at his grandmother's church, the Traveling Soul Spiritualist Church on the South Side. That's where Todd got the title for his book. And right here is where a young Curtis would sing doo wop on the streets of his Cabrini Green neighborhood. When they moved to Cabrini Green, that was a godsend for them. They, they, for the first time, they had indoor plumbing in their own place. The Impressions got their first recording contract in Chicago with the song For Your Precious Love at VJ Records. I believe Chess Records was closed that day and then they ended up going across the street to VJ on Record Row right here on, on uh, Michigan Avenue. Your love me. Some may call Mayfield a musical genius, a phenom. An artist who early on chose to buy his own record label rather than sell out his music to a big name record company. He came from nowhere, you know, Cabrini Green, self taught. Did, he did his way, you know, he did everything his way. He lived his life the way he wanted to, which, and everyone can't say that. In 1990, 
He suffered a debilitating accident when lighting equipment fell down on top of him during an outdoor concert in New York. It paralyzed him from the neck down, yet he still recorded music. He has to be the only quadriplegic in the world to have a, a studio album released on a major label. Nine years after his accident, Mayfield died at just 57 years old. Found success very early. He found himself very early, he would like to say. Most people don't know what you want to do in life when you're 10, 12 years old, but, uh, but he did. such an incredible man and an incredible musician and that was Michael Matier reporting. Now the book has been optioned to become a film and it will shoot it in Chicago. Mayfield won numerous awards as you heard throughout his lifetime including two inductions into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Music Hall of Fame that is.